In a microservices ecosystem, services often depend on each other to function correctly. If one service experiences an issue, it can create a cascading failure, potentially bringing down the entire system. The circuit breaker pattern acts as a safeguard against such failures, preventing them from spreading and allowing your system to continue operating even when some of the services are experiencing problems. Imagine an electric circuit breaker in your home. If there is a power surge or short circuit, the circuit breaker trips, cutting off the power flow to prevent further damage or fire. Once the issue is resolved, you reset the circuit breaker to restore power. Overload protection occurs when too many devices are connected to a circuit, drawing more current than the circuit wiring can safely handle. The circuit breaker senses the excess current and trips, interrupting the flow of electricity to prevent the wires from overheating and potentially causing a fire. In the context of microservices, the circuit breaker pattern is primarily focused on overload protection. It aims to prevent a service from being overwhelmed with request when a dependent service is slow or unavailable. Especially in distributed systems, the handling of faults is crucial for ensuring reliability and availability. Transient faults are momentary hiccups in a system, like a fleeting network glitch or a brief server overload. The retry pattern is a resiliency strategy where an operation is automatically reattempted after a short delay, allowing the system to recover gracefully from these temporary issues. For example, imagine a cloud-based file storage service like Dropbox. A user attempts to upload a photo, but a momentary network congestion causes the initial upload to fail. With the retry pattern in place, the application would automatically reattempt the upload, potentially succeeding once the network stabilizes. However, not all failures are transient. Some failures are caused by more persistent faults, such as complete service outage or data corruption. In these cases, repeatedly retrying the operation can be counterproductive, wasting resources and potentially exacerbating the problem. In these cases, repeatedly retrying the operation can be counterproductive, wasting immense amount of resources. For example, a social media platform like Twitter relies on multiple backend services. If the service responsible for posting tweets goes offline completely, retrying failed tweet submissions indefinitely would be pointless. Instead, the application should quickly recognize the issue and inform the user that their tweet couldn't be posted at this time. In highly concurrent systems where multiple operations are happening simultaneously, failing quickly is often the best strategy. This prevents a single point of failure from causing a chain reaction ultimately safeguarding the system stability. For example, a high-frequency trading platform processes thousands of transactions per second. If a critical component like the market data feed becomes unresponsive, each trade request waiting for a response with a long timeout can quickly consume system resources. By failing fast and immediately rejecting the new request, the system can conserve resources and potentially recover more quickly when the market data feed returns. The retry pattern and the circuit breaker pattern serve different purposes in managing the resiliency of the applications in a distributed environment. The retry pattern is designed to help an application deal with transient issues. And this I have covered in one of my previous videos where I talk about idempotency checks. Circuit breaker pattern aims to prevent an application from continuously attempting an operation that is likely to fail especially in persistent fault scenarios which might take longer to resolve. Circuit breaker pattern helps preventing cascading failures and provides a way to gracefully handle service failures. In a microservices architecture, services are interconnected and often depend on each other to function correctly. A cascading failure occurs when a failure in one service triggers a chain reaction of failures in other dependent services, potentially leading to a system-wide outage. Let's imagine a simplified e-commerce system with the following microservices. A product microservice, which manages the product information. A shopping cart microservice, which handles adding or removing items to or from a user's shopping cart. An order service to process the orders. And a recommendation microservice that suggests relevant products to users based on their browsing history. So say the product service experiences an outage, perhaps due to a database failure or a coding error and it becomes unresponsive and fails to return product information. And so, the first level impact would be for the shopping cart. The shopping cart service, which relies on the product service to display product details, starts receiving errors. And so, customers can't add items to their carts, leading to frustration and lost sales. And with the shopping cart malfunctioning, the order service cannot process new orders correctly. Customers are unable to complete their purchases, 
resulting in further revenue loss. And finally, in a third level impact, the recommendation service uses data from the order service, for example, past purchases, to generate a personalized recommendation. As the order service struggles now, the recommendation service receives incomplete or inaccurate data. The initial failure in the product service here has now cascaded through multiple services, causing a significant disruption to the entire e-commerce platform. Customers are unable to shop effectively, complete orders or receive personalized recommendations, resulting in loss of sales, negative reviews and potentially damage to the entire company's reputation. So circuit breaker is crucial for preventing or minimizing such cascading failures. For example, here, a circuit breaker in the shopping cart service could prevent it from repeatedly calling the failing product service, allowing it to display a message such as product information temporarily unavailable, instead of just crashing. Circuit breaker basically acts as a proxy, monitoring the operation's success and deciding whether to allow it to proceed, return an exception immediately, or wait for a specified time before trying again. It acts as an intelligent gatekeeper, regulating the flow of requests based on the health of the microservice. In normal operation mode, the circuit breaker is closed, allowing requests to flow through to the dependent service. The circuit breaker constantly monitors the health of the dependent service. It tracks the number of failed requests, latency, and other relevant metrics. It acts as a counter, incrementing each time when an operation fails. And if the failure rate exceeds a certain threshold, or if the dependent service becomes unresponsive, the circuit breaker trips and opens. This means that subsequent requests are immediately rejected without even trying to reach the failing service. And after a timeout period, the circuit breaker enters a half open state. In this state, a limited number of test requests are allowed through to the dependent service. If these requests succeed, the circuit breaker assumes the service has recovered and returns to the closed state. And if they fail, it goes back to the open state. For example, here, the shopping cart microservice that depends on a product catalog microservice to fetch the product information. If the product catalog service goes down, the shopping cart service could be bombarded with requests, potentially leading to its own failure. And by implementing a circuit breaker, the shopping cart service can monitor the product catalog service for failures. If the failure rate exceeds a threshold, open the circuit and reject request to the product catalog. And then it can display a message to the user that the product information is temporarily unavailable. After a timeout, it can attempt to reconnect to the product catalog service. Netflix Hystrix was a pioneer in the circuit breaker pattern implementation for Java. However, it is no longer actively maintained. Resilience 4J is actively maintained with a vibrant community ensuring timely bug fixes, updates, and new features. It is designed to be lightweight and modular. In this example, we create a circuit breaker instance with a custom configuration using Resilience 4J. Circuitbreakerconfig.custom starts building a custom configuration for the circuit breaker. Failure rate threshold sets the failure rate threshold to 50%, meaning if 50% or more of the recent calls to the remote service fail, the circuit breaker will open. Wait duration in open state sets the wait duration to 60 seconds. So once the circuit breaker opens, it will remain open for 60 seconds before moving to the half open state. Permitted number of calls in half open state basically sets the number of permitted calls in half open state to five. This means that after the wait duration, the circuit breaker will allow up to five calls through to the remote service to test if it has recovered. Circuit breaker registry registers the circuit breaker with specified configuration. And circuit breaker product service creates a named circuit breaker for the product service. Now, circuit breaker dot decorate supplier wraps the fetch product details from remote service function call with the circuit breaker logic. The circuit breaker will now monitor the calls to the remote service, tracking successes and failures. If the failure rate exceeds the threshold, the circuit breaker will open, preventing further calls to the remote service until it has chance to recover. This is where you implement the actual logic to call your external product catalog service. If the call fails, for example, it throws an exception due to network issues or service unavailability, the circuit breaker will record the failure. The circuit breaker adds resilience to your microservice by preventing it from being overwhelmed by failures in dependent services. Yeah.